Hi everybody, we have been studying ratios the past month or so. Uh, so today is a summative lesson on all of what we've been doing. There are several ways to represent the same collection of equivalent ratios. These include ratio tables, tape diagrams, double number line diagrams, equations, and graphs on the coordinate plane. So we're going to use some of these methods for this particular problem. Jen and Nikki are making bracelets to sell at the local market. They determined that each bracelet would have two beads and two charms. Complete the ratio table below to show the ratio of the number of charms to the number of beads. So this specifically says they want it to be charms to beads. So charms is going to come first before beads. Now, right away, the charms are already filled in and I can see a pattern in the way that that's filled in. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So they're counting by twos each time, which is an additive pattern. So there are a couple different ways we can look at ratio tables. If we can find an additive pattern, there'll be an additive pattern for the beads as well. So each jump here is plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So each jump here is also going to be equivalent so in this case, if this was plus 2, this one is going to be plus 8. So 8 and 8 makes 16, or we double it. Then we're going to add another set of 8 for 24, adding another set of 8, and we get 32, and another set of 8, and we get 40. The thing about when you find additive patterns, the additive patterns end up making the true ratio of the table. So I can see when I added two each time, you can see here's that two. When I added eight each, each time, there's that eight. Now two to eight is also, I can take that, and when I look at this, I automatically find when I look at a ratio table, I always want to get it into simplest form. It's easiest for me to visualize. So I know that two and eight are both even. I can divide them both by two and I can get the value of this ratio table, which is truly just one to four. So the other thing about the value of the ratio table is I can use that to help me write an equation. And I know that um, an equation is one of the things that we had worked on as well. So looking at this ratio table, if I compare the charms to beads, I'm gonna let C be charms and B represent beads. I know that if I take the number of charms Every single time, if I times that by 4, I'll get my amount of beads. I also know I can write that equation another way. If I'm given the amount of beads, say 40, if I divide that by 4, I end up with my amount of charms. So there's a couple different ways that you can write an equation based on a ratio table. I like to find the value of the ratio table to do that. Now, in this particular problem, it wants us to go ahead and take the data from the ratio table and make ordered pairs to plot on the graph. So the ordered pairs, and they want it to be charms to beads, ordered pairs go x comma y, and that helps me graph. My x is my horizontal axis, and my y is my vertical axis. So in this case, for charms to beads, C for charms, B for beads, which means that my charms is going to be my information here, and my beads will be my information along here. And obviously when I'm creating a graph, I'm going to need a title. So I'm going to title my graph the number of charms to the number of beads. In science, you guys would say versus number of be beads. All right, so I have my main title. I have my x-axis and my y-axis. The other thing I would have to do is try to figure out what to do with my count bys in order to graph my ordered pairs. So um, my charms are counting by twos, and I don't have a lot of room here. So what I'm going to do, I can see zero is always at the corner. Oh, my board's off a little bit. And we count lines, not spaces. So my first is going to be two, skip a line, four, 
skip a line six, skip a line eight, skip a line ten. Sorry, it's getting mushed in here. Skip a line twelve, skip a line fourteen, and I don't even need to go that far. Um, and then when it goes through beads, my beads already have a count by also. It's counting by eight. So instead of recreating to try to figure out what I'm going to skip count by, I'm just going to use my data that's right from my ratio table. So I'm going to skip a line and make this line 8, skip a line 12, skip, oops, sorry, not 12. There's 8, skip a line 16, skip 24, skip 32, skip 40, skip 48, and I've gone further than what I even need. So we just have to graph what's in the table. Now, when it talks about ordered pairs, if I've already got no, it has to be x, y. So here's my x, here's my y, my charms and my beads. My first ordered pair to graph would be 2 to 8. So I'm going to find 2 on my charms and go up to 8 on my beads. And there's my first point. Looking at the chart, the next one is going to be 4 to 16. So I'm going to go to my graph, find four charms, and go up to 16 beads and make a point there. And we'd continue going through. So 6 to 24, writing as an ordered pair would be 6, 24. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph that one. The next in line is 8 to 32. So 8, 32 is right here. And 10 to 40 is right there. So now we've gone ahead and we've graphed, and I can see if this pattern were to continue through infinity or however long she's going to graph, that it forms a straight line. And the reason it forms a straight line is because the ratios that we worked with for our data are all equivalent in that table. If I graphed um, one point was off, of the line somewhere, I would know that I made a mathematical error because if they're truly in, an, uh, in a ratio table, they should all be equal ratios and they'll form a straight line. So I hope that helped you, helped you uh, summarize what we've done in the last month and uh, help prepare you for the quiz. Good luck in your practice.